Welcome back to the channel, Mike Brick family. And today we have more Joy Toy and Warhammer collaborations to review. And I'm actually very excited about this one, just like I'm pretty much excited almost every single time I review these action figures. These things are probably the best thing that was invented since sliced bread. So today we have a very, very large action figure to review. It's not as large as the Invictor Tactical War Suit, but I'm going to bet that it's probably going to be half the size of the Invictor Warsuit, which is still really, really big. And that particular action figure is the Venerable Dreadnought. And this is, again, a very, very sizable box. And I will bring out a regular Space Marine as well as the Tactical Warsuit so we can compare the sizes of the Venerable Dreadnought. Now, Dreadnoughts are actually very near and dear to my heart because outside of the Orc and the Blood Angels second edition box set, the Dreadnought was the first individual model that I actually bought with my own hard-earned teenage dollars to buy. So this action figure, like I said, is near and dear to my heart. And without further ado, let's jump in and do the review. All right, Warhammer fans, it is time to get into this venerable dreadnought box and see what we have inside all right everybody the venerable dreadnought has been unboxed unveiled so let us take a look at this bad boy and see what's up with it so straight off the bat ah, I'm going to lament this lack of highlighting that's going on here. The Invictor Warsuit had highlights going on at the edge of every single panel here. And unfortunately, the Dreadnought does not have the same highlights. So I'm sorry that I'm lamenting the lack of highlights on this model, mainly because I actually believe that the highlights make this model stand out so much more. This looks very, very dull compared to the Invictor Warsuit, and I really wish that this had highlights. Regardless, let's move on and take a look at what's going on. So it appears that these smoke launchers actually do have some highlights on the tip over here. You can see there is a white outline. So the smoke launcher is a little bit dull here, mainly because this does not have the gunmetal brushing that you see on the body of the smoke launcher. And the rest of it is just a kind of a dull black. So no big deal. Moving on from there, let's take a look at the the power plant here. And the power plant, you can see there is plenty of shading that's going on up top. It's very dark in the tops over here, and then there is some light gunmetal brushing. I wish that they actually had more gunmetal brushing throughout the whole entire power plant, whatever you want to call it. The seal looks pretty good. So with the shading on this part, you can see that there was some bleed from the black onto the blue over here. Maybe the machine got a little bit too exuberant on trying to paint the shading. All right, so moving on, let's take a look at this massive twin-linked LAS cannon. This arm joint, it looks like there is like a joint mechanism allows this twin link glass cannon to hold the position that you want it to hold. You can actually hear that it's squeaking a little bit, which is a bit annoying to me. But once you position it, I don't think you're going to be doing anything with it. So looking at the painting over here, you have a nice garland over here with the copper color. And there is actually some bleed with the copper color onto the black. And then you also have some black onto the copper which is pretty crazy there are some light highlights over here but they are very very light compared to the uh, invector war suits highlighting and there's also some you know nice gunmetal brushing that's going on it almost looks like this is actually highlighted so taking a look at the range finder for the las cannon it is of a very dull color i would think that would be nice to have this as a silver red type of color but it's just a dull red so again just like with the 
twin-linked LAS cannon. There is the same joint type mechanism that allows you to hold the various positions that you want. And the power fist, you are able to rotate this back and forth and you can hear the clicking. There is a limited range of motion that you can have for this power fist. It's actually kind of annoying because you can hear the squeaks to it. And you can rotate this part back and forth. Unfortunately, you are not able to open up this power fist here. I kind of wish that you were able to pose this thing, but you are not. And <laughs> this thing really squeaks bad and it's a bit irritating. But no matter, we move on. All right, so let's take a look at the Storm Bolter. It's kind of easy to mistake this for a heavy bolter or a twin link heavy bolter just to the sheer size of this. It does have highlights that you can see on the black parts over here. Um, there is some an even painting that's going on. You can see the highlights because kind of bleeded onto the black of the casing. There is some nice gunmetal coloring throughout this whole entire storm bolter, all the way up to the magazine. And it's really cool that this magazine is of a very, very soft, pliable material. So let's look at, uh-oh. Oh no, that's not right. So this is a little bit of a disappointment that I'm going to have to glue back on. So as you can see here, the top seal has come unglued, which is a big disappointment. And looking at the seal itself, it looks like there actually may be some damage over here because the paint has peeled off from this copper portion on both of these skulls. And wow, that really sucks. I would expect a little bit better with the craftsmanship on this model. And then taking a look at the rest of the dreadnought, you have yeah, some bleed that goes on from the copper color onto the blue. And then the purity seal over here has a bit of a white bleed that's going on. That's I'm not too much of a fan of. Again, with these lens type areas, I kind of wish that Joy Toy used some sort of silver coat underneath and then had a light clear coat over there to actually make it look like lenses and pop out. So this is a little bit dull for my opinion, because when I actually paint this myself, that's exactly the technique that I use. So let's see what's going on with the legs. You are able to hopefully pivot this back and forth, as you can see, you can, with a full range of 360 degree motion here. So you can see me spinning this around. And let's see with the legs what we can do. So it's a ratchet mechanism that you can hear you can pose the dreadnought back and forth same thing with this one there's a ratchet mechanism and it appears that you're also able to bend this dreadnought at the knees as well as the feet you're able to move around to for posing purposes and looking at the feet again there are some painting issues over here you do see a lot of bleed with the shading onto the blues. I think the shading is a little bit overboard over here, which is a slight disappointment. We're going to have a side-by-side -side comparison in terms of size with a regular Space Marine or a Primera Space Marine. So this is your regular Primera Space Marine. The Space Marine comes up to about halfway of the Dreadnought. In terms of size, it's not that massive, but you can tell that this is a very large model. And then I will not be able to fit this in the field of the camera. And this is the Invictor Warsuit over here. And it looks like the Dreadnought comes about halfway to the Invictor Warsuit. So this just shows you how huge this warsuit is. Okay folks, final thoughts with regards to this model. I'm not too much of a fan of receiving an expensive model and having parts of it being broken off that needs to be re-glued to have a little bit of damage that's going on. I would expect a lot more. I'm not sure if this is a manufacturing issue or it got damaged during shipping. I'm not 100% sure. With regards to the overall accuracy, I mean this is 100% spot on exactly the same as a venerable dreadnought that you would buy from games workshop joy toy did a fantastic job of replicating the whole entire 
model down to the T. What do I think of the model? I think it's okay. I think there's a lot of painting issues over here that kind of detract from the whole entire model and my excitement for it. The squeaking is a little bit of a detracting thing. I would think that they would, you know, have a little bit more of a quality here. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this model and let me know if you think it's worth your money to buy it. So this is Spruce and Studs. I hope you enjoyed this review and I will catch you all in the next one.